All Americans, not only in the states most heavily affected, but in every place in this country, are rightly disturbed by the large numbers of illegal aliens entering our country. The jobs they hold might otherwise be held by citizens or legal immigrants. The public service they use impose burdens on our taxpayers. That's why our administration has moved aggressively to secure our borders more by hiring a record number of new border guards, by deporting twice as many criminal aliens as ever before, by cracking down on illegal hiring, by barring welfare benefits to illegal aliens. In the budget I will present to you, we will try to do more to speed the deportation of illegal aliens who are arrested for crimes, to better identify illegal aliens in the workplace as recommended by the commission headed by former Congresswoman Barbara Jordan. We are a nation of immigrants, but we are also a nation of laws. It is wrong and ultimately self-defeating for a nation of immigrants to permit the kind of abuse of our immigration laws we have seen in recent years, and we must do more to stop it. everybody Roger here uh, today I wanted to talk about something that it's a very disgusting story um, and and I, I hate even talking about it especially after reading the, the contents uh, it, it's 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 nerving to me so forgive me if I seem a little off edge here uh, it's it's very personal in regards to something that's happened uh, to one of my closest friends um, similar to this kind of a scenario that is just kind of getting to me so um, and I'll probably talk about that in the future you know I'm not going to go into specifics about what happened in my personal life but um, I do want to go ahead and get started on this and uh, it's in regards to a man named Luis Bracamontes he is an illegal alien uh, he is currently living, uh, yeah, I guess the word is, uh, he is currently uh, in jail, I'm going to say living in uh, El Dorado County in jail in California for crimes that he has committed in um, October of 2014. So we're looking at, it's 2018 now, three years and, and uh, three months, so... Um, you know, I look at the before and after pictures of this guy, and, and uh, when he was uh, taken into custody, he was um, uh, he was a pretty slender man. So it looks like taxpayer money went to go feed him for the last three years and three months, so he can face trial and do the shit that he's been doing uh, uh, to the families, to the police officers, to the um, and and the victims, and actually um, our justice system. Uh, he's he, he's 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 one of the most vile people I think I've ever seen on television or yeah uh, internet television etc. I don't think this is really getting covered all that much, especially with what's going on in the world of um, supposed shithole countries, uh, supposed government shutdowns. Uh, well, you know, I'm kind of looking at this scenario here. Uh, Bracamontes ended up uh, murdering two police officers in this one night um, he ran over one of them after he executed them he ran over one of them with his vehicle as he was trying to flee um, then he he shot it could have been a third person but he shot another person with the last name Holmes um, in the face uh, five times Holmes survived uh, he was sitting in his uh, Oldsmobile Alero and uh and ended up um, surviving and being able to testify in court. All the while, uh, 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 Bracamontes was um, laughing at him and said, "I, I would, I should have killed you." And you know, just the most vile, despicable person. I don't know how any of these attorneys could represent this guy. I think they're doing it. I, I think one of them actually came out and said, "I'm only representing. I'm not representing him. You know, because I feel he's innocent. Something to that extent." Anyways, Bracamontes is an illegal alien. He's been in um, in the El Dorado County pri uh, Jail for a little over three years. 
on your taxpayer dime, California. Uh, you guys are paying for this guy to go from skinny to fat and, 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 and uh, embarrassing our judicial system um, and uh, killing cops going on television saying that uh, he's, or not even on television, I don't even know if this is widely covered, I'm seeing this online. He is going online, um, or he, he, he basically in court basically saying if he would have killed, if he could, he would have killed more officers. This is, we have a government shutdown right now because Congress wants to have dreamers pass through. This guy is an illegal alien. Let's put it like this. This man, Bra Luis Bracamontes, is an illegal alien. He was booked under the name Marcelo, Marcelo Marquez. But think about it. If this man had kids here and men like him have been here before, Genetics play a role in this shit. This, uh, this guy's, I'm sorry, my cat's going crazy. This, uh, this guy could be a father. He could be an, I'm gonna put it like this. He's an example of a father, uh, to potential dreamers in America. Now, I'm not, I'm not trying to point fingers at dreamers here. You know, I do think that dreamers, for the most part, are victims of their parents inability to understand that they were putting them in bad situations you know trying to better their kids but at the same time they're leaving their countries uh, where they're again you know I, a whole different story there I'm going off topic here and uh, I, I'm not one to criticize that I have an opinion but I can't criticize it because uh, I'm not there. I don't know what it's like to be in Mexico. I, I would probably be doing the same thing. So would any white guy. So would any black guy. So would any Jamaican guy. So would anybody who has the ability to have a border so convenient pla conveniently placed in front of them. Try to cross it for freedom. It just so happens to be that right now people are Mexican and doing that. Beyond this, let's go ahead and, and just and just and just start going, um, uh, uh, getting going on with my story here. So, I'm gonna I'm gonna be reading some of this from a couple of websites. Uh, one of the one of the best sources for what was happening here was a, a, a website from California called the uh, uh, sacb.com, and and it it's. It's, it's an article covered by Sam Stanton, uh, so kudos to him for documenting all, all, the majority of this. Um, so this article is called, On the Sacramento Bee, He's trying to act like he's crazy, says witness, called N-word by a confessed cop killer. Uh, this happened two days ago, January 18th at 10.28 a.m. Here's how this starts. Even for Luis Bracamontes, who has repeatedly threatened to kill officers and displayed his disdain about the death penalty trial he faces, Thursday marked a new low. I don't know about... Okay, I'm going to stop right there because the new low is knowing that this man is an illegal alien. Granted, he already killed people, you know, three and a half years ago. Um, innocent Americans. And he's here serving, or waiting, you know, uh, now serving... Um, trial, a d possible death penalty, I really hope so, um, for what he's done. But again, you know, the taxpayers have to pay for this fat fuck to be alive, and this happens. You know, I, if there was a death penalty in California fit for this man to be putting very small three-inch needles in him very slowly in each orifice in his body until he dies, the shock would just kill him after about maybe three quarters or two, uh, one quarter of his body, I'm assuming. That's fitting. It's probably even way too lenient. My opinion. Um, but from what I understand, uh, California has not had a death penalty since 2006 because they considered it inhumane or some shit like that. Uh, capital punishment anyways. So, anyways, going back to this. Um, Bracamontes repeatedly threatened to kill officers and dis displayed his disdain about the death penalty trolley faces. Thursday marked a new low. Bracamontes, an illegal immigrant from Mexico, accused of gunning down Sacramento area deputies both Danny Oliver and Michael Davis Jr. in 2014, 
was removed from court twice Thursday morning after outbur after outburst at Oliver's partner, um, as well as the slain lawman's families. Yeah, he he's making faces at the women as they come in. They had to put they had to put like a something to block him from viewing them. It's ridiculous how much leniency this guy gets, and he keeps making vulgar comments, disgusting comments to the families, the officers, uh, the court. And then his attorney say, oh, no, no, uh, he gets, uh, Bracamontes gets kicked out. And then the attorney say, no, you know, he said he's going to calm down. He gets back in, he's, he's at it again. The, the trial continues on Monday, Monday, um, the 23rd of January. So we're going to see where this goes. But anyways, going on here, he was allowed to return for the afternoon session and capped off the day by hurling the N-word and other racial insults at the final witness of the day, an African-American na uh, man who said Bracamonte shot him five times in a failed attempt at a carjacking. You're lucky I didn't kill you, Bracamonte said as Anthony Holmes left the witness stand. F you, Holmes replied, you know, he said the full word, as he walked out of the courtroom. The incidents marked the latest in a series of outbursts from Bracamonte's grant uh, going back months. Sacramento Superior Court Judge Steve White warned him repeatedly that he would wind up watching his own trial on closed circuit television rather than in court if his behavior continued. Those warnings have been going on for months. He's been doing this for months. The judge is warning him for months that he would be watching it from a closed circuit his, his trial from a closed circuit television for months. If he continued his behavior, the behavior continues. The courts, the judge, Mr. Stephen White, is not doing his job. There's, there's nothing, there's nothing um, forceful about the system when illegal immigrants can come in and be told repeatedly. It's kind of like slapping a kid in the hand over and over again. You're not going to get a candy if you keep acting that way. I'm going to slap your hand. I already told you what you could have. What do you want? I don't you have any mother You can't have chocolate. <laughs> you can't. I want it though. You really want chocolate that bad? Slap the hang. The child gets candy an hour later. The, the, and this, this cycle happens over and over and over and over again. The, the kid doesn't learn. This guy's not learning. This guy knows how to play the system. It's a joke. White also rejected the judge. Also rejected yet another plea from defense lawyers to allow them to enter a not guilty by, a not guilty by reason of insanity plea. And said he can see the defendant... Uh, calculating when to erupt. These are unforced errors, White said. These are things that Mr. Bracamontes does to himself. He goes off when I expect him to go off. The first incident Thursday came as Sacramento Sheriff's Detective Scott Brown was approaching the witness stand. The second later, came later in the morning after Brown testified that the gunman who shot Oliver, his longtime partner, drove off and ran over the body to get away. Now again, imagine you're a family or a friend or even a fellow officer who's a lifelong friend um, hearing a story like this and, and, and having to sit there and, and hear this. Buracamontes began laughing quietly <laughs> at the image Brown described and then began shouting after White ordered him removed again. Again, when White keeps saying, you're going to have this, you're, gonna, you're not going to be here any longer, uh, removing him, bringing him back, removing him, bringing him back over and over and over again, the guy is getting his way. The guy, Bracamontes is getting his way. This man is not an American citizen, and he's getting his way in the American judicial system. Get that through your heads, people. F you all, Bracamonte shouted towards the, fam the families of the slain deputies. F Danny Oliver, F Michael Davis. This is the guy on trial. 
The incident came the third day of the trial. Brakamontes had spewed his insults and profanity each of the days he had been in court, only to be admonished by the judge and allowed to return after promising to behave. Again, over and over and over again. For the most part, family members of the dead deputies have sat stone-faced, staring back at the defendant. But Thursday's court session was an emotional one for some, of the, some in the audience, as Brown described Oliver's ambush, Oliver's ambush slaying on October 24, 2014, in the parking lot of Arden Way Motel 6. Brown walked in the courtroom in a dark business suit and approached the witness stand, but, fe but before he could get there, Brackmontes began mocking him and appeared to call him a coward. A comment he also made Tuesday during the first trial. Again, White, you're not doing your job here. This guy keeps getting away with this shit. White immediately barked, be quiet, then had the two juries, uh, juries hearing the case against Brock Montes and his wife, Janelle Monroy, leave the, court, Monroy leave the courtroom. While Brock Montes, uh, White told Brock Montes he had the right to attend court, but could not continue to disrupt proceedings and had him removed. Again, 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 again. It keeps happening. Please take him away, the judge told deputies who escorted the heavily shackled prisoner away. After taking a break and allowing the jury to leave at mid-morning, White declared that Bracamonte said he would behave himself and was allowed back in to hear Brown testify. The behavior wouldn't last long. The confessed gunman... Uh, the confessed gunman, both he and one of his lawyers, has said Bracamonte shot the deputies, remained quiet for all of an hour while Brown calmly recounted the day Oliver was shot. Brown said he and his longtime partner cruised into the parking lot of the Motel 6, looking for suspicious activity and eventually stopped near a parked car with two people. Okay, so I'm going to kind of skip through all this. If you guys want to read through like what happened during that night as the officers were patrolling and stumbled across Bracamontes here and the uh, his his wife, Mullen Roy, whatever her name was, um, you're going to you're going to you're going to read in description what had happened. And it is it is pretty bad. Um, uh, uh, again, this is where two officers were slain. Um, and a third individual was shot five times and survived and was part of the trial of the testimony. Okay, so I'm just scrolling through here. Um, there's a part here that I do want to read. So Brown maintained his composure for most of his testimony. He finally showed up. He finally showed some emotion after Bracamontes had been removed and prosecutor uh, Rod Norgard asked him to describe how he found Oliver after the gunman had escaped, Oliver being the officer that was slain. He was laying on his back, gun still in his holster, Brown said, occasionally wiping away his tears. There was blood coming from his forehead. He had a gunshot wound to the forehead. His eyes were open and he wasn't breathing. So now this is the part that reminds me of what happened to my best friend. I'm controlling my composure here because I've read this over and over and over again before I made this video, but this does bring back personal uh, uh, scenarios in my, in, in, my, in my life that my friend experienced um, when he was murdered. So, um, and, and, and my, you know, what I had to go through after that, along with his friends, his family, his, 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 uh, his kin. Um, so it's, it's, it's kind of a, it's, it's a big deal to me. So, um, after all this happened, uh, as, 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 as Brown left the court after, after testifying, deputies and others lined up to shake his hand and to give him hu a hug. So, you know, everybody, you know, felt the pain that he was going through, uh, in regards to seeing this happen to, uh, his, his friends, uh, during that night. Bracamontes was allowed back in the courtroom after the session. Uh, and wasted little time as victims' families were brought in. He smirked at them and made lewd faces at the women until a bailiff at, uh, was asked to block his view of them. Okay, so that's what I was talking about earlier, how he was um, he was mocking women, families, and something had to be put in place. It was, it was a bailiff uh, to block his view of the people coming in. Then came Holmes, uh, who authorities say was the second man Bracamonte shot during his rampage. 
Prosecutors believe that after Bracamontes killed Oliver and fled, he ended up on Spanos Court, a cul-de-sac uh, west of Ho Avenue. There, Holmes was sitting in his burgundy Olds Oldsmobile Olero waiting for a doctor's appointment. Holmes testified that Bracamontes walked up to his car and opened the door. He said, give me your car, like he's serious, Holmes said. I'm like, man, I don't know you. I tried to start my car up and he just shot me in my head, in my ear. Holmes was shot five times in his face and hands and recalled Bracamontes having a smirk on his face as he shot him. This is the kind of guy we're dealing with, people. Again, not an American, uh, an illegal immigrant. Again, not saying that Americans don't do this kind of shit, but this is this is this is signature of what's going on today, and what your Democrat Congress congressmen and 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 everybody in office, uh, Democratic, are trying to protect. Just keep this in mind. Yep, he's like he's he's got right now. Holmes said as the two men stared each other down. Holmes displayed no appetite for courtroom niceties, cutting off public defender Norm Dawson when the lawyer began asking if Bracamontes appeared off in any way during the shooting. Man, he was trying to kill me, Holmes said. Man, he's not crazy. I'm telling you, he's trying to act like he's crazy. This is the guy, under testimony, got shot five times, once in the face, on the ear, a couple times in the hands. Man... He was trying to kill me, Holmes said to the attorney, to the defendant's attorney, to Bracamone's attorney. Man, he's not crazy. I'm telling you. Or, man, he's not crazy. I'm telling you, he's trying to act like he's crazy. As Holmes left the witness stand, Bracamone's continue, continued his verbal, his verbal onslaught against Holmes, then directed it towards the families and members of the two juries, which included African-American jurors. Black lives don't matter, he shouted. Monkey, he added as white glared in silence until the jurors had left. Okay. I'm not, I don't side on any sort of an activist group. I'm not for white nationalists. I'm not for Black Lives Matter. I'm not for Mecha. I'm not for anything that involves um, uh, poignant stances for individual races. We're all equals. America claims we're equals. We have those inalienable, inalienable rights uh, as citizens, regardless of the color of our skin, to be treated equally. This kind of bullshit doesn't matter to me. However, when you start saying, etc., etc., lives don't matter, and calling people names because of their skin color or, or their origin, uh, their race, ethnicity, whatever, um, you're an asshole. This guy is a dick. So, um, yeah, I, I think that, um, you know, the judges, or the, uh, 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 Judge White, uh, is, is not a fierce judge here. The judge has made it clear that Bracamontes has a right to be present, but not if he continues to act out. Again, how many times have I said this today? This is already the third time. And he asked deputies to come up with a speedier method of removing him from court after each outburst to keep the trial from being bogged down. You know what you do? You put duct tape on his mouth. Just like Judge John McBain told Camia Gamet uh, as she was just laughing, smiling, smirking uh, during her trial where she had apparently murdered her boyfriend. Marcel Marcel Hill um, and just would not stop laughing. You're gonna well, shut your mouth or I'm gonna have some duct tape put on it. Well, he attacked right. me. We'll wait here for a moment till we can get her quiet. Right. I agree with the family. I hope you die in prison as well. You know, and if this was a death penalty state, you'd be getting the chair. That judge shut her up. So anyways, anyways, going back to the story, um, I'm looking at this guy's crazy face. He's just a, he looks like a pudgy, um, pudgy whack job. He got in, you know, skinny as me, and I'm, I'm not really a lot skinny, but he got in his, you know, my size. And now he looks like he's double. So he's been, he's been having good eats in prison, in jail, um, awaiting his trial. Three and a half, a little less than three and a half years of all of this being taken care of at taxpayer expense. Again, people, this is where your money is going when you 
when you harbor uh, uh, felons like this that are illegal, you just take them out. Just take them back to Mexico. The smile on this guy's face is, is disgusting. So anyways, that's the end of it. It says the trial continues uh, Monday. Uh, that's, in, that's in three days. Today's Friday, uh, January, tw uh, January uh, 19th. Okay, so... Yeah, he, he, he then says one of the biggest lines in the whole case... Accused cop killers outburst. I wish I had killed more of the motherfuckers. That's what he says. I want to fucking speak. Be silent. I don't want to fucking allow me to do that shit. Ladies and gentlemen of the jury, now. please step out of the hallway. But you're fucking dead. <coughs> I don't fucking regret that shit. The only thing that I fucking regret is that I fucking was killed too. I wish I fucking killed more of those motherfuckers. <coughs> Fuck it. Yeah, if we have such camera turned off, I think the order was only through. I will break up soon, and I will kill more. So anyways, I'm going to move past this and go on to what's currently happening today and tie it all together and close this out. So, Anthony Brian Logan did a great piece on this. He covered this very well. And... And uh, this is where I first heard about this case. I didn't really hear about it in 2014 when it happened, so that's full disclosure. I read about it a lot today and yesterday. Uh, and then I've kind of tied it in with what's going on with um, the Dreamers, uh, DACA, um, uh, the uh, government shutdown. You know, it seems like, and, and, and the claims that, that um, Democrats are putting illegals and uh, uh, Dreamers over priority over Americans. And I, I do kind of see that that's the case now. It's, 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 it's very obvious to me at this point. So, so Bracamontes faces charges of murder, attempted murder, carjacking, stealing a patrol car and a deputy's weapon, and other weapons related charges. His wife faces one count of murder, three counts of attempted murder, four counts of carjacking, carjacking and possession of an assault weapon. Um, she looks like a fucked up whack job too, so. And her name is, um, Janelle Monroy, Monroy Marquez. Uh, and also, like I said, um, uh, Mr. Bracamontes was booked under a different name. I'm not sure how that happened. Could it be that maybe he stole somebody's social security number, has somebody else's ID, who's actually an American citizen? Who knows? You know, I've seen this happen before, and we you know with family and friends of mine here. So, um, for all you people saying that, oh no, these illegals are innocent, they work hard and everything, do you understand that sometimes they steal identities to actually try to benefit from that? Yeah, get over yourselves. So, going on with this now. We had this week Senator Cory Booker um, being kind of a dick to. Um, uh, the DHS secretary, you know, I, I, I seriously can't wait until, until, uh, I, I can't wait for Cory Booker to be parodied on SNL, being played by Keegan Michael Key, you know, for his outburst and everything, because they both kind of look like twins, but you know what, that's not going to happen, they both kind of sided with the same coin there, so, here's, here's hoping, you know, I, um, you know, Peel made a movie about racism that doesn't even really exist today, and uh, and uh, and I think Keegan Michael Key is kind of the same way, where he's not even going to be um, wanting to do something like this. It it would be funny, in my opinion. Again, like I said earlier, California has not had any executions since 2006. This is, I think, this trial is considering the death the death penalty. Um, and, and uh, I really, like I said earlier, my death penalty would probably be uh, pins going in this guy's body from, uh, you know, not even from top, from the face down. I would say from, like, maybe the cheeks to start, uh, one eyeball, his tongue, um, slowly, his ear, one ear, leave one ear fine so he can hear his own screams. And then, you know, put these needles all over his body and just keep him in there and slowly puncture him. And then give him some sort of a sedative that, that lets 
that lets the pain la uh, uh, subside for a little while and, and then he can regain his moderate blood pressure again, his heart rate, uh, and then start the process all over again. But keep doing that slowly for about a week, a week, you know, and, and, uh, and wait for the death to slowly come. That's how I think this guy deserves to die, in my opinion. That, that to me would be a proper death death sentence. Uh, but you know, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not a, a lawyer or anything. I'm not, I'm not part of the judicial system. I don't run these things. I don't think I ever will. Um, but if I did, that would that would be something I would consider in a case like this. I guess uh, if it was if it was voted on, if it was made legal. So don't take my words out of context. <laughs> so, anyways, um, the I want to kind of add another little bit of a tidbit here in regards to California and its ideas on the death penalty. 1972, Cal. I'm reading this from Google. I'm not a fucking dictionary. 1972, California Supreme Court declares death penalty unconstitutional. Uh, 107 condemned prisoners resentenced. California voters passed Proposition 17, an initiative that amends the California Constitution to provide that the death penalty is not cruel or unusual punishment. Good. Is there a death penalty in Cal? Or people also ask, is there a death penalty in California? On July 16, 2014, a little bit less than a year after this happened. Federal Judge Cormac J. Carney of the United States District Court ruled that California's death penalty system is unconstitutional because it is arbitrary and plagued with delay. Well, this guy, this guy is, is an illegal alien, and he's he's uh, been in the, you know, he's been in jail in California uh, for three years and three months during this trial. Probably going to be a little bit longer too taxpayer expense. Uh, the state has not executed a prisoner since 2006. Let's hope Bustamante, or Bracamontes, I keep saying Bustamante, sorry. Bracamontes is the first one that it happens to. This guy is definitely well deserving of it. You'll see when I post videos on this video of what he says. So, then we have issues with, with with what's dividing our current lawmakers right now and DACA threatening us, you know, with threats of a, of a government shutdown. And as of me recording this, uh, there is a government shutdown. I think there's like uh, um, reserve funds to keep government operating for the weekend. I, I could be wrong on that. Uh, but there's supposedly some kind of a resolution that may happen on Monday if they're able to work through it. Trump canceled his, um, his, uh, his campaign um event at Mar-a-Lago uh, where seats were like $100,000 to be sitting next to him or with him or have photo ops or whatever. Uh, that has been, uh, he canceled that uh, because he knew it would look bad uh, if, if, if he was to attend that while this is happening. And that was the whole thing of this, you know, people are being played, American citizens are being played at the expense of American citizens and their, and, and being protected you know, from, from shit like this, from illegal aliens coming in, murdering our officers, murdering families and friends, American families and friends, uh, and them wanting to bring more in. You know, it makes, it makes absolutely no sense. And, and I think, I hope this affects them in, in these midterms uh, coming up here very shortly. I think it will. I think that there's going to be a big price to pay. America isn't stupid. You know, a lot of us are. That might be a little bit. But um, the majority of America is not. There's there's a lot of us who actually do take advantage of, of, of trying to learn a lot of what's going on and, and keep keep tabs of what you guys are doing. You better fucking watch out. Our votes are going to count for something here. You know, you're not going to try to pull a Hillary Clinton and, and, and uh, try to get in with, with deceptive tactics and whatnot. So keep that in mind. So there's a couple of things that I wanted people to be hearing in regards to this current uh, uh, Bracamontes case in California and what's going on right now with the uh, with uh, DACA issues that are being shoved in our face you know saying that we're liable American citizens in a way are liable but it's really our um, 
our lawmakers and the enforcers who are more liable for not enforcing the laws the way they should have been in the first place that allowed people like this to come in and take advantage of our resources. And it's costing us as a whole, as, as a whole. You know, come in legally, come in through legal means and, and means that you, that um, make you want to earn that cloud of being an American. Not that you feel like you have to be one. You have to earn things. I have to earn my position at my job. After and a day after day after day after day. Just like everybody else. Just like somebody working at Walmart. Just like somebody working in the field. You fuck up. You screw up. You're going to be put out. There is no special privilege just because you're alive. There is none of that. And, and that's what the Democrats are trying to fight for. They're trying to say, oh, but they're people. They're people, they're people, they're people. And they came in here and it wasn't through their will. I granted, I will give you that. I feel very sorry. I, I have, I am like up and down on the scenario of like, man, these, these kids didn't ask for it. So what's happening right now, I wanted you guys to hear about this exchange between Donald Trump and, um, and Feinstein and, and uh, Representative McCarthy. And I want you to just listen to what happens here. So here it goes. Um, I, I think there needs to be a willingness on both sides. Um, and I think, and I don't know how you would feel about this, but I'd like to ask the question, what about a clean DACA bill now? and with a commitment that we go into a comprehensive immigration reform procedure like we did back when I remember when Kennedy was here. And it was really a major, major effort, and uh, it was a great disappointment that it went nowhere. nowhere. Why does she want to go back to that if she already claimed it was a major disappointment and it went nowhere? Answer me that. Now, Trump gives off some stupid answers here. And he has to have some other, uh, he has to have McCarthy come in and save the day uh, and bring realism back and bring uh, Feinstein back into relaying what she specifically meant. Uh, and I do like that in this scenario. Uh, I don't know if I'm, I, I think that's basically what they could say. We're going to come up with DACA, we're going to do DACA, and then we can start immediately on the phase two, which would be comprehensive. Yeah, I would like, I would like to do it. Go ahead. I think a lot of people would like to. But I think we have to do DACA first. Mr. President, you, you need to be clear, though. I, I think what Senator Feinstein is asking here, when we talk about this DACA, we don't want to be back here two years later. You have to have security, as the Secretary would tell you. But I think that's what you're saying. I think, no, I, no, I think she's saying something different. I'm thinking you're saying DACA without security. Yep. Are you talking about security as well? I'm going to answer that first. She's not talking about security. You know why they don't want to do this right now? They want to get this out of the way because they're not going to address the issues later on. They're going to save it. They're going to extend it. They're going to. They're going to keep. Um, they're going to. They're going to try to buy themselves some time until the midterms. It's 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 disgusting what they're doing. They're basically playing with the American people. In this case right here, I do see that the Republicans are actually trying to do the right thing. Again, I'm not a Republican or a Democrat. Uh, but the Democrats do try to make it to where it costs us as working class citizens a lot more. And they, they get mad. They say, oh, we're, we're taking away from people, but yet they're stealing from us as working class citizens. And look, I got bills to pay. I have a lot of shit to do in my time. You know, I can't go out and buy no um, uh, um, uh, Paul Joseph Watson pictures for no, for no cheap money or anything. You know, I have to frame it and stuff, and it costs money, so... Anyways, um, I, I think it's I. I even saw that even before uh, McCarthy brought it up. I, I I knew that Feinstein was was shoving a tactic here. Trump didn't acknowledge it at first. Uh, yeah, I think the rest of America saw it as well. You know, if they were watching the C-SPAN um, uh, meeting here, and, and uh, I think maybe only like ten thousand people on Earth saw it. So um, who knows? Anyways, continuing on. If we have some meaningful, comprehensive uh, immigration reform, that's really where the security goes. Let's hear that again. Well, I, I think if, if we have some meaningful, comprehensive uh, immigration reform, 
that's really where the security goes. If we have comprehensive immigration reform, that's really where the security goes. So that's like basically saying, I think if we have a security guard who is known to be sleeping on the job because they're not working 24-7 in front of my door that's unlocked at my house, that it's okay, you know, because when they're sleeping, nobody's going to cross through. And if people do cross through, well, it's just, it's part of life. And, and they'll, they'll be in America and they could, you know, we'll, we'll try to see what we could do after that. That's what she's saying. Uh, there's, we've tried this before. We've tried this before, and look where it got us. We now have 800,000 supposed people that are going to be granted leniency. It's not just 800,000. Multiply it by the multiply it by the amount of kids that they have on average. We're looking at anywhere between four million, four million, three million, and seven million. That would probably estimate to think is about 4.5 million people who have come into America, benefited from DACA, those are vote difference makers. 4.5 million people estimated, for me estimated, um, that would eventually be persuading and turning the tides of how people vote in America. Will we be voting for dependency, or would we be voting for... Um, uh, the way the current system is going right now with uh, America First. Uh, it seems like these... Feinstein knows this. Feinstein knows that, that, that she has to fight for these people to stay in here. Does she give a fuck about them? No. Does she give a shit that they're, they're utilizing um, benefits and resources and, and the taxpayer funds that, that people who are homeless in America or our vets... Uh, who are homeless or, or, or have debilitating diseases uh, and, and ailments uh, uh, could benefit from. No, she doesn't give a shit. She just, all she cares about is that vote, no matter the cost. Uh, and so do the rest of the Democrats as well. So this is what I see in this conversation here. And if we could get the DACA bill, because March is coming and people are losing their status every day, <laughs> people are losing their status because we as citizens voted people to enforce the law. Those people who enforce the law decided to be lackluster about it. We didn't see through it as a whole. We kept voting them in. We got less and less secure. We got less and less um, reprimands. We let people stay. Um, <laughs> we deserve what's coming to us at least by at least to the extent that we need to, I, I feel the direction it's going to go is that we're going to be giving these these DACA people amnesty. The next step after that is looking at their kin, looking at the, looking at the kids, uh, the 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 kids that they give birth to, and and, uh, and having to they're American citizens at this point. Um, but Feinstein is trying to put off; she's trying to hold off. Uh, uh, building the wall, funding for building the wall, funding for secure security. She's trying to push that off as long as she can. Think about this for a minute, people, where this is going. Something other security was voted on just a few years ago. And, and no disrespect, there's people in the room on the other side out who voted for it. Now, if I recall, Senator Clinton voted for it. So I don't think that's comprehensive. I think that's dealing with DACA at the same time. I think that's really what the president's making. It's kind of like three pillars. DACA, because we all, we're all in the room want to do it. Border security, so we're not back out here. Yep. And chain migration. It's just three items. And then everything else that's comprehensive is kind of moved to the side. So I believe yeah, when the president talks about right. DACA, and a lot of it. I think we should add merit. merit. I mean, if you can, add merit-based. <laughs> no, I, I don't think, I, I don't know who's going Merit-based lottery. Ensuring that uh, there's no chain migration, reform, immigration reform. There's nothing wrong with that. We don't need to be bringing in people that we know taxpayers are going to be taken care of. I understand maybe for refugees, but these people aren't refugees. There's countries that need a revolution. There are. And, and, what, and, and, and we're, we're staving it off. We're making it worse. These people are coming into America and 
and these countries are needing some sort of a, a revolution. And again, you know, some might say that I'm saying this in the comfort of my American home, and I do, I do say that that way. Uh, I don't feel no shame in it. I feel a little bit of guilt because, you know, I am of a, of a Mexican descent, um, and while I do appreciate my my background, I don't. F I, I I don't I don't I, I do think I appreciate it a little bit more than the people that are fleeing their own country, uh, for different reasons. So, anyways, we'll see how this goes. Can argue with merit based. Who can argue with with merit based? And this, I mean, Diane, go ahead. Do you no one really can argue think with merit that there can be agreement on all of that? quickly to get DACA passed in time. I w wanted to ask uh, Mr. McCarthy a question. Look at her, to get DACA passed in time. That's all she cares about. Notice the arguments on the news right now on actual uh, content creator commentary is, is, is fact-based. These people are not caring about citizens right now. They're caring about the DACA recipients. They're caring about dreamers. They're not they're not putting America first at this point in time. They're going to shut down a lot of... There's just so much going on right now that they'd rather focus on on people who... They're, they'd, this is how I'm going to put it. They'd rather focus on the people they let into our country illegally because of their, dis, of their poor decisions, or rather, I think, done tactfully, or, or, or um, uh, rather done... Um, uh, yeah, tactfully, I guess. Um, and we're paying the price for it. So anyways. Do you really think there can be agreement on those three difficult <laughs> subjects you raise in time to get docked? It's not difficult. Follow the law. Passed and effective. So yeah, you have heard from Leader McConnell and uh, Speaker Ryan, who said they will put the bill onto the floor if the president agrees to it. And us getting to the room, I haven't seen us be this close and having this discussion in quite a few years. Now keep in mind, Donald Trump, just, just today, he rejected the current proposal, which is why there's issues. But again, you know, nobody's saying what's in those proposals. That's not, I don't see it, that's been published yet. I'm assuming that there wasn't anything, I'm pretty sure that there was nothing addressed that needed to be addressed, and and uh, and that's why he turned it away. Now, everybody's making a big stink out of it and saying they're going to blame it on him, but I'm glad he didn't sign off on it because I have a feeling that the things that the American citizens who voted him in office, that wanted to see certain specifics on, these, on this part of the bill, uh, of the of, of this um, of this scenario passed probably was not even in there. So he's looking out for the best interests of America, is what I assume. The news isn't going to report that though. About the last four years, so I think yes, we can make this happen. We all know it. We've done it before. You and I spent a long time. We did probably one of the most difficult things to do in California. Why? And I believe we can get there, and we can just keep working uh, each day on it. I think what we're all saying is we'll do DACA, and we can certainly start comprehensive immigration reform the following afternoon, okay? We'll take an hour off, and then we'll start. But I, I do believe that. Because once we get DACA done, if it's done properly, with you know, security and everything else, if it's done properly, we have taken a big chunk of comprehensive out of the negotiation, and I don't think it's going to be that complicated. Yes. So that's it. That's what you have here. We have a whole entire scenario um, regarding a really good example in one week of an illegal alien who has come and destroyed lives in America, two lives in America, along with extended lives of family, friends, um, police officers, uh, partners. Um, in uh, in Bracamontes, in the case with Bracamontes, if you guys aren't following it, follow it, because this is going to make you into a true patriot when you start seeing what exactly is happening, the leniency this guy has been given in the courtroom. What American do you know has has defied a judge like that, 
has defied uh, jury, his attorneys, the the, um, uh, the witnesses, in a way that 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 belittles them, that that tells them they wish they could have killed more. Only in California, right? At this stage of the game, maybe Washington. I'm talking Washington State. Maybe even Washington D.C. Maybe Chicago. I don't know. New York comes to mind. But California. I mean, look at this as an example, and and compare it to what's going on with with DACA, the Dreamers, and put put it all together. If this guy had one or two kids in America that we don't even know about, well, guess what? We have a couple of other little mini me's of him out there at this point in time. Who in the future, if we don't, if 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 Feinstein gets her way, we delay the. We delay the uh, the border security over and over and over again. Um, we don't have uh, a, a really detailed outline uh, description of what needs to happen that is going to be enforced. We're going to keep the cycle going. You know, it's it's uh, this this is how I look at it. Uh, I I I I I, th- I I do believe that there's a lot of issues going on in regards to. In regards to all the stuff that we're seeing today, in regards to illegal aliens, um, protecting people who have already broken the law. I mean, do we give leniency to black families when fathers have been arrested for a one ounce uh, possession of marijuana? Do they get this much leniency as this guy who has been cussing at the at the ju- Judge White when he has been mocking the jury when he has been insulting the families and friends the witnesses when he when he belittles the people testifying Bracamontes is 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 the prime example of people undermining american law and we let it happen as a whole we are letting it happen i'm doing what i can and I'm pretty sure the majority of you are as well. I'm at least giving you all the benefit of the doubt. But the thing is, there's a lot of shit going on right now where other people are getting more benefits than we are as far as like uh, benefits in regards to our sovereign rights that they still have a hold of. Now granted, uh, Brachimontes needs to be here in America to uh, uh, see throughout his trial and see if he has a guilty or innocent conviction. I would really love to see what his country says afterwards if he's his, if he's going to be guilty. Are they going to try to come in here and, and save his life and say no? He's a he's a Mexican citizen. He could be coming back to Mexico again. This is hypothetical. I don't think that would happen. But I mean, think about it. Think about it. You know, we're detaining the guy. Um, you know, we saw what happened with uh, Kate Steinle, uh and 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 her murderer. What's to say it's not going to be any different here? Now, I'm going to go back to... I'm going to end this with with something that happened to me in my personal life. Um, uh, My best friend was murdered in cold cold blood, in the coldest blood you can imagine. Execution style is basically how how it went. And from what I saw in the trials, it was a long trial in the waiting. Yeah, three and a half years, three and a half years. Um, uh, There was one acquittal for uh, second-degree murder. Uh, Everything was was, uh, dropped. The charges were dropped for this person, which, I don't know. I, I guess if I'm looking at it from a neutral standpoint, I can see how that can be done. But for the first person, it was a mistrial. And the person who is, who, um, who was accused of first degree murder um, it ended in a mistrial you know, the jury couldn't decide what was gonna what the result was you know I go back to I go back to that case because I'm looking at all the evidence that I see in regards to what has happened and maybe I'm looking at it in a biased way I probably am because you know he was he was like a brother to me and and then I'm seeing this happen and how these officers feel that their brothers were taken down this way and how and how they're still having to live through the insults that he that uh, Brachmontes is displaying in court 
um, how the families are having to deal with this, how the kids are having to deal with it, how the kids and the families who are listening to this man in court saying he wish he could do it to more families. Think about that for a minute, people. Somebody coming from a foreign country, not giving a shit about American ideals, American way of life, saying this to us, and we're allowing them in here. California is letting them, Mr. Judge White here in California, is letting him get away over and over and over and over and over again, saying the most rudest things in his court, and he's letting it slide and continue over and over again. Think about all this. And then see what Congress at this point is, is, is fighting for. Are they fighting for Americans or are, are they fighting for dreamers? Are they fighting for, for, for people who aren't even real American citizens? Um, are they fighting for... Um, uh, at this point I see what's happening in regards to people coming from Mexico or, or China or any, any foreign country illegally here. Um, they're basically looking out for their votes. That's it. That's the only way they can get their votes. They can't win any arguments anymore. They're going to get the votes by getting dependent people to come here and, 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 and uh, take over America. 4.5 million people. Remember that number and then look back at the uh, Clinton versus Trump presidential election and see how close this election was. Now granted it was a little far because of how tactfully Trump was in regards to getting the electoral votes. He knew where to campaign, knew what to do. But if you're looking at sheer numbers, and if these sheer numbers are placed accordingly in certain areas, then this could make or break the next election. Keep this in mind, people. I appreciate you watching this video and, and listening to my rants here. I know it was deep, it was long, and it probably made sense, no sense half the time, but um, leave me any comments if you want. Um, it's a big deal to me. Um, and... Uh, I believe in America first. I believe in giving back to the people that, 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 that give as much to this country as they're willing to, to work for and sacrifice their, their lives, sacrifice a time with their family and friends. You know, America is the biggest country for sacrifice. And, uh, and, and, and we got to keep it uh, going. Uh, and not let any other issues like what we're seeing here interfere with it um, anyways that's, that's all I gotta say I hope you guys have a great day thank you for listening to this video uh, rate, comment, share, subscribe if you want or thumbs down or whatever You know, let me know what I can do better let me know what I've done good and I'll try to, to, uh, to cover things as, as holy as possible alright you guys have a great night take care Today, our immigration system is broken, and everybody knows it. Even as we are a nation of immigrants, we're also a nation of laws. Undocumented workers broke our immigration laws, and I believe that they must be held accountable. If you're a criminal, you'll be deported. If you plan to enter the U.S. illegally, your chances of getting caught and sent back just went up. The actions I'm taking are not only lawful, they're the kinds of actions taken by every single Republican president and every single Democratic president for the past half century. And to those members of Congress who question my authority to make our immigration system work better or question the wisdom of me acting where Congress has failed, I have one answer. Pass a bill. That's racist! You can't have chocolate!